Hi, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Workman, and what I'm going to do is go through uh, the pressure and temperature relationship here. Um, and what I'm having you look at here right now is a set of data that was actually collected by uh, some of my students in fifth period class. And um, this was collected with the gas pressure sensors and the temperature sensors where you put the little uh, triangular Erlenmeyer flask in different temperature waters and then the pressure went up or down correspondingly. And <clears throat> as you look at this trend right now, what I want you to see is that as temperature goes up to the right of this graph, pressure is going up as well. So that's why we have a line here. This is our best fit line. This is a positive slope. The slope on this is 0.3189 or something like that. And what we can tell here, if I do a little bit of analysis here with interpolate, I can tell that the x-intercepts, so that's the place where, in theory, pressure would be 0. If I have pressure 0, um, and now I'm looking at you know this window up here. Now I've just moved that window. If pressure is 0, temperature is really close to what it looks like, negative 277.83 degrees Celsius. So please recall what zero pressure means. Zero pressure would be zero collisions of the gas particles, which means absolutely no movement. So according to these data, or this data set, what we have here is that uh, absolute zero is somewhere around negative 277 degrees. Now, that's actually pretty good for uh, a set of high school students collecting some data. Um, but over and over again, the scientific community that has um, looked at this relationship over and over again. Uh, the accepted value for this absolute temperature of zero or absolute zero temperature would be negative 273 degrees Celsius. Um, that's the theoretical temperature at which all particulate motion stops, and so you'd have zero pressure. Well, <clears throat> as we look at this, um, what we need to be able to do is have some type of mathematical function that will allow us to predict what would happen uh, to pressure if temperatures changed or what would happen to temperature potentially if pressures changed. Um, so um, what we need to try to do is develop a constant. And the only constant that I can see here is this slope. And if you know how to calculate slope, well, it's going to be rise over run, uh, which is your change in y divided by change in x. The trouble is here, um, it's hard for us to use that calculation every time. Uh, you know, if we don't have a bunch of data points. Um, when I'm trying to predict a pressure change if, with a temperature change, I want a real simple formula to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close this file, and I'm going to show you another one that I did. I took the same data, and I changed it into a pressure versus temperature, but I just changed the scale to Kelvin. So I basically took the numbers that, that those students gave me, and I just added 273 to their values, and these are the same pressure values that they um, calculated. And what we have here, I actually, um, I think I rounded up or down in some instances here. So the slope is very similar, but it's not exactly the same. But what I'm going to do here is do my analysis and do the interpolate. And what we have here is temperature and pressure values. And what you'll notice here is that all the pressure values and temperature values remain positive. I don't have any negative temperature numbers here, which means it's probably likely that I can develop a constant. And when you have a linear function graph, you can calculate slope by just taking any y value and dividing by any corresponding x value. So what I'm going to do here is just, just try that. I'm going to take this. This y value, this 90.17620, I'm going to just highlight this. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to open up my calculator here. I'm just going to paste that in there, and what I'm going to do is divide it by my 278. Divide by 278. And what I get there is 0.3243748, OK, whatever that is. And if you look at this number, it's really similar to what this number is here, this 0.325. All right, so what I'm going to do is just make a note of that, um, that my first pressure number divided by my first temperature number was equal to 0 0.324. I'll just write that there, 0 0.324. <clears throat> now what I'm going to do is do that again for this second set of numbers, pressure and temperature. Uh, so I'm going to just do P2, and I'm going to divide that by T2. 
2. And let's see what happens there. So P2 is this number. Let me highlight that. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to put it in my calculator. I'm going to paste that. And now I'm going to divide that by the temperature that corresponds with that, 283. Divide by 283. And look at that. I get 0 0.324. All right. 0 0.324. Let's try P3 divided by T. T3. Uh, my number disappeared there, but that's all right. Let me copy that. And I'll paste it. And then what I'm going to do is divide that number by this 287 number. Divide by 287. And I get 0 0.3254. 0 0.3254. Well, those numbers aren't exactly the same, but they're really, really close. So it looks like what I'm able to do here is develop a constant um, by taking my pressure values and dividing by my temperature values. Anytime I take two corresponding values and divide the pressure by the temperature, it seems to come up with the same answer. So that's why our formula to develop our constant is P divided by T will equal a constant for the pressure temperature relationship. So if you are ever given a uh, pressure temperature, temperature scenario where I give you one pressure and two temperatures and you got to figure out what the second corresponding pressure would be. Well, you can figure it out using this formula. Your P1 divided by your T1 is going to be equal to your P2 divided by your T2 or any other pressure temperature combination that correspond. So um, what we're talking about here is what's called a direct relationship. That means as one variable increases, so does the other in a direct way, all right? Because we have a constant slope here. As temperature goes up, pressure goes up in a constant way. So that's it for pressure temperature, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you understand why pressure and temperature are directly related.